Peter, so this book has a bit of a history. In the foreword, you write about how you started uh, writing it in 2005. Nobody wanted to publish it, and it's now 2020. So perhaps just for our uh, viewers, give us a sense of the history of this book. Well, yeah, I, as you say, I wrote it in 2005. Um, I did a lot of research on it at the time. I'd, I'd written a book previously as part of my China thriller series, which required a lot of research into the Spanish flu virus of uh, 1918. Um, and actually, when you look back at what happened in 1918, 19, uh, it's very similar to what's happening now with the coronavirus. Um, and so that was my kind of background in that. And, and I got interested in the SARS outbreak in China in 2003. Uh, and that kind of fizzled out. But I, I had got the idea at that time of perhaps setting a thriller against the backdrop of a, a major capital city uh, in lockdown because of a, um, a viral pandemic. Uh, initially, I thought Beijing, uh, because I was writing my China thrillers at that time. Uh, and then uh, about 2004, my then publisher pulled the plug on the China series. So I was looking around for another idea. And I decided because the science at that point was talking about bird flu as being the next potential uh, pandemic. And scientists were always talking about, you know, we are in an inter-pandemic period. It's not a question of if, but when there would be another one. Um, and so bird flu was the, the, the hot topic at that time. So that's what I did my research on. And I wrote the book and I chose London as the setting. Um, it's a story that takes place very concentrated period over 24 hours, but it's set in this dystopian London, uh, which is absolutely locked down because of the bird virus, which is killing tens of thousands of people. Um, and, you know, all the all the research went into play to paint the picture of what that would look like. Um, and uh, unfortunately, publishers at that time felt that, um, you know, I'm a crime writer. Um, they felt that this was more science fiction or science fantasy than, uh, you know, a, an, an authentic background for a crime book. Um, despite the fact that it seemed to me that it was it, it was only too possible and only too real, but nobody believed it at the time. And so I couldn't get it published. It, it went away into a drawer. I forgot about it, literally forgot about it. I've written about 12 books since then. Um, and it wasn't obviously until this current pandemic broke uh, a few months back. Um, and even, actually, even then, it, it, I, I, it never occurred to me that, it, that, that this would be publishable now. Um, it was somebody on my Twitter timeline who suggested that I might like to come up with a thriller with the coronavirus as a backdrop. And I, I suddenly thought, wait a minute, I've done that already. Um, and I went and dug out the, the old manuscript and reread it. And, you know, I'd written it all that time ago. So a lot of the detail I'd forgotten about, but I was astonished at just how close what I'd written back then was to exactly what's happening now. Initially, I wanted to ask you, could you ever have imagined that this would happen now in um, our current world? But obviously you could have. <laughs> um, but I do want to ask, do you feel a bit vindicated? Vindicated. Um, that that has vindication is a sense perhaps of gloating about it, and I would hate to gloat about this current pandemic because it's so awful. Um, in truth, I would rather that the pandemic had never happened and that that manuscript had remained in a bottom drawer. Um, uh, in fact, I, you know, when when I I told my publisher about it and um, and they asked to see the manuscript and uh, they said, yeah, we. We've got to publish this now. I felt uneasy about it because I didn't want to profit from other people's, you know, misfortune or misery. Um, so that I, I had decided, you know, immediately that um, my entire advance on the book should go to, you know, charities fighting COVID-19 on the front line. Um, uh, and uh, so you know, vindication is... Um, it's not exactly what I would uh, say. Um, I, I, I think it, I always think thought I always thought that it was a, a good thriller. I mean that it's that it's a fast-paced, breathless 
thriller that takes place in this very focused, concentrated period. And, and you know, for that reason, it seemed to me to be worth publishing. But obviously, the background um, of the, the present virus uh, pandemic and the background of the book was so coincidental that, you know, it, it was kind of perfect moment for publication. How much research did you have to put into this book? I mean, the, the descriptions of the H5, H1 uh, in one virus, rather H5 in one virus. Do you uh, did you have to do a lot of research? How accurate is it? It's very accurate. Um, yeah, I did a lot of research into. Um, out, there had been outbreaks of it in in Southeast Asia uh, and and China, and the scientists had done a lot of work and a lot of background research on it, and were predicting that the mortality rate would be anywhere between sixty and eighty percent, which is unthinkable really i mean coronavirus is one maybe two percent at the at the at the most and and that's bad enough um so it was uh, you know the, the mortality rate would uh, ultimately uh, have been more akin to well the total deaths would have been more akin to what what was experienced during the spanish flu virus so i mean i drew a lot on my research from spanish flu and then also the research into um the bird flu virus um, and uh, the other thing that I researched was how governments would respond to a pandemic that required a lockdown um, and I at the time where I you know when we were talking about publishing this book I went back into my folder I keep everything I back into my research folder and found uh, documents I had referred to at the time and there were two uh, pandemic preparedness documents uh, that have been prepared by the NHS and the uh, Health Protection Agency in the UK and one that had been prepared by the health authorities in the United States. And they went into some considerable detail in how governments should uh, respond in the face of a, a, you know, a global pandemic. Um, and I, so I drew a lot of uh, inspiration and information from those. The irony is, of course, that both the British and the American government seem to have thrown those away in the meantime and were wholly unprepared for what actually happened uh, now. Let's talk about the plot aspect of the book. For the people who haven't read it yet, uh, what is the book about? It's, uh, well, as, as I say, it's set in London um, during this lockdown and um, there's a construction crew at work on a site opposite a, a city centre um, hospital um, building an emergency overflow, overflow hospital. They're, they're doing it, you know, and it's one of those kind of um, seven days, 14 days construction jobs. Um, and the workers on site discover a hold all in a hole that they had dug the night before to lay foundations. Um, and inside the hole doll are the, the bones of a child. Um, now, obviously, they weren't there the night before. So uh, it suddenly this becomes a murder inquiry. Uh, my main character, um, Jack McNeil, D.I. Jack McNeil, who works for the Metropolitan Police, is on his last day. Um, he's he's quitting the force because it's of the the effect it's had on his family and the, his relationship with his son. Um, he wants to spend more time with his son, um, but he's handed this investigation, and so it's a it's a, a, a story of trying to track down the killer or killers of this child and discover why. Uh, it, against the backdrop of 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 a city in lockdown and people social distancing, um, you know, not interacting in any normal sense. A lot of it takes place during during the hours of darkness, uh, which obviously intensifies that sense of, of the book taking place in a very concentrated period. Um, uh, and uh, well, I won't, I won't I won't give away the end. It's quite it's quite a dark story, really. Um, and um, I suppose the, the, the one positive that, that we can all take from it now is that, you know, although we think the coronavirus pandemic is bad, it could have been an awful lot worse. Well, that was going to be one of my next questions, actually. What do you want people to take away from this book? Knowledge, more than anything else. I mean, I, you know, the research I did for the book is, is very well grounded. Um, and, and I think uh, one of the things that I have been... Um, banging on about for years ever since I started doing this research is, is people's ignorance about how 
germs and uh, you know bacteria and viruses are transmitted and how easily they're transmitted but also how easily uh, easily they can prevent that transmission by taking the proper precautions um and i've I, you know i've been um a bit of a Howard Hughes, I guess, uh, over the last uh, 15, 20 years. I mean, I carry um, gel with me all the time. I carry disinfectant wipes. I get on an aeroplane. I fold down the, 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 the table in front of me. I wipe it down with a disinfectant wipe because whoever was in that seat before me, you know, an hour earlier could have been carrying the flu, could have been carrying anything. And those germs, or those, that, that, those viruses are on that table and they will stay on that table for three days. 72 hours, you know, so the first thing I do is disinfect that area, right? I've been, you know, uh, but people should be aware of those things. Um, and I think, uh, you know, if anything, this is teaching the, the world to be aware uh, of how easy it is to catch a virus and how if you take the proper preventative steps, you can avoid catching it. Tell me something. Are you working on anything new at the moment? <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the, it's it's been a problem. I was supposed to go uh, last month to Svalbard, which is an archipelago in the Arctic Circle. It's about 800 miles from the North Pole, um, and that was research for my next book. I'd spent about four or five months developing my idea, and the last step was to go and do my location research in Svalbard. I should have been writing it right now, but obviously the trip had to be cancelled because of the coronavirus, ironically. Um, and I've had to completely change tack, uh, fall back on plan B, because I have to deliver uh, a book before the end of the year. Um, so I'm writing something or working on an idea now for something which is much closer to home, which is here in France, um, probably within a radius of about 10 miles of where I'm currently living um, so that I don't have to do a lot of uh, research travel um, and I can do most of the rest of my research um, by internet. And then just finally, I always ask this of veteran writers and you are a veteran writer. Old you um, mean, old. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, you've got a wealth of experience in writing. Do you have any advice for young aspiring writers? I, well, um, two things. One, uh, when you're starting out, write about what you know. Um, don't tackle big, uh, difficult subjects that require a lot of research because research is a is a an experienced technique in itself. I spent eight years working as a journalist where I honed my abilities as a researcher. Um, so write about something you know, something you're intimately acquainted with. And the other thing is just write. A number of people that talk about writing, oh, I've got, I've got this idea, I've got a book I want to write, and they never do. Or they maybe sit down and, and with a blank page and they doodle about and they write, you know, a hundred, couple of hundred words and then give up. Um, you're never going to write a book unless you actually persevere. So write. write. It doesn't matter uh, what you think of what you're writing at the time. Just press on. You can always go back and fix it. So you have to write about what you know and just do it. Absolutely. Peter, thank you so much for your time and all the best with the book. I'm pretty sure people are going to latch onto this because it's just so close to home right now. Okay. Thank you very much.